When I was first assigned a priest, I had the great privilege of being assigned to Epiphany in Coon Rapids, and it was uh, an amazing opportunity uh, to be able to minister the sacraments. We had three daily masses a day. Uh, we had weddings. Uh, we had about 100 funerals a year, if, if not more. And I also had the opportunity uh, to minister with fellow priests, uh, another associate and the pastor, as well as another priest, uh, Father uh, Bernie Reiser, who was the founding pastor of Epiphany, uh, lives still on campus. Uh, they have senior uh, apartment complexes there, so Father Reiser lived there. And most funerals he, w- he would attend as well because being the founding pastor for, you know, we're being there for over 50 years, uh, he, he definitely knew most parishioners. But he also kind of said, you know, you're, you're, you guys are the priests, so you guys go ahead and celebrate the funerals uh, and all this, you know, con celebrate. But before every single funeral mass, if Father Reiser was there, I would ask him, Father Reiser, uh, would you please uh, read the gospel today, proclaim the gospel? And he'd look at me and say, is it the usual? And I go, yes, Father, it's the usual gospel, John chapter 14. And he knew it so well, he didn't have to look at the readings. He had uh, the, the, the verses memorized. And the reason for this is because, well, John 14 is by far the most popular uh, funeral reading. That's not saying it's not a good reading. It's actually a beautiful reading, and it makes sense why so many people choose it for, for, for their funerals, uh, because it speaks so well of what is awaiting us. And today we, we have this reading, John 14, 1 through 12 describes that, that dwelling place. The way that we come to know Jesus means that we also come to know the Father uh, as well. And then at the end, we have this uh, amazing line as well, which is essentially telling the apostles that they will do greater things, greater things than even Jesus did himself, which you go, whoa, how is that possible? Well, let's take a, a deep dive into and to the scripture and kind of understand what's going on here. As stated, uh, this, this beautiful line from, from Jesus where he says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. It's important to remember, how is Jesus kind of viewed during, during this time? Or how does he present himself? And we know this to be true as well. That Jesus is what? Jesus is the bridegroom. Which is a fancy word for saying groom, but it sounds a lot better, right? Jesus is the bridegroom. And it means that the church, we the people, are the bride. So we have this image of a marriage between us and Jesus. This covenant between us and God. And 2,000 years ago, it's important to realize what the marriage ceremony actually looked like. Back then, the husband and wife uh, would be married, but they would, yet, they would not live together right away. We see this with, with Mary and Joseph. They are, they're married, and yet when Mary becomes pregnant, what is Joseph going to do? He's going to divorce her quietly, not to bring shame upon her because Joseph was a just man. Well, how come they weren't already living together? Well, the main reason was because once a couple were were married, the husband would actually leave and go and prepare a place for them to live. He would have to go and build the house, uh, secure the property, and build it up. And once it had been prepared, he would come back, and this is when the joyful celebration of a marriage ceremony would happen, this big banquet that would happen for three days, right, as we hear about the wedding feast at Cana, and then the bride and groom would process off to their new dwelling place, where they're going to raise their family, where they're going to spend their life together, Back then, there wasn't, you know, uh, hopping from one house to the next. Once you built your house, that was pretty much your house. And so there'd be this this great procession, this great joy. It's actually one of the ways that the tradition of the husband carrying the bride through the doors of the new home comes about is all the way back then, 2,000 years ago. And so the husband comes back after preparing this place and takes them to this 
new dwelling place. Now, hopefully it makes more sense now, right, when Jesus refers that this is what he's going to do as well. In John 14 here, this is at the Passover meal. This is at the Last Supper. And it's kind of Jesus' farewell, his goodbye to the apostles. But what he's telling them is what's going to happen. And we see this happen. Jesus, of course, is crucified after the Passion. He dies and is buried And he goes away. But in that time, what's happening as well? Well, he's opened up the gates of heaven for the apostles and for all of us. And he has prepared a place for us. And he comes back again and the resurrection and then leads us to this dwelling place with him and his Father and the Holy Spirit in heaven. He goes ahead and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're called to follow him on this way. I think sometimes we have this image, right, of this dwelling place is going to be like a mansion. Because the King James Bible has this interpretation that there's going to be mansions for us. And, and to have this image in our mind of heaven as, you know, uh, the blue skies with a couple clouds and the sun and the, uh, the, the green grass and, and harps and angels playing. Poss- possibly, I guess. But the most important part of heaven is what? That we're in this communion with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is love, by the way. And we're in this communion of love and experiencing this fullness of God, this fullness of love, which Jesus has prepared for each and every one of us. Not just for the apostles, but for all of us. And Thomas asked him, well, how do we know the way? Uh, that, that word, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that, that word way is Greek, is, is hados, which actually means a path. It means a road. And so Jesus is the path to what? To salvation, to eternal life. It's through him with him and in him that we're able to attain this eternal life, this dwelling place, not made with hands, but eternally in heaven. And how does he let this happen most explicitly? It's in the sacraments. The sacraments, we know that old Baltimore Catechism definition of the sacraments. An outward sign of an inward grace instituted by Christ for our sanctification. When we participate in these sacraments, we are receiving this grace of Jesus Christ. And this is why Jesus can say in John 14, verse 12, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. And so what Jesus is saying is that the sacraments are a greater work than the miracles he has performed up to this point, which you go, wow, really? I mean, think about it. What has he done already? Well, the wedding feast at Cana, changing the the water into wine, the feeding of the 5,000, the countless miracles of, of healing people, the raising up of Lazarus from the dead. And yet what Jesus is saying is that the works he has done so far are not as great what's going to happen what the apostles are able to do. And what are the apostles able to do? Well, they were able to celebrate the sacraments, acting in person at Christi Capitas, and the person of Christ the head. And what do the sacraments do? Well, they bring us salvation. They bring us eternal life. It's St. Thomas Aquinas who, when he speaks about this, this verse, chapter 14, verse 12, he states, what is remarkable is that he adds, and greater works than these will he do. Christ is speaking of the result or work when he says that believers will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do. For the justification of the wicked 
is a greater work than the creation of heaven and earth. For the justification of the wicked considered in itself continues forever. But the heavens and the earth will pass away. And so what happens in these sacraments is a greater thing than even the creation of the world. Think about this. Someone who may be in mortal sin and they go to the sacrament of confession and that mortal sin is wiped away, is made clean by God's mercy. Now they'll be able to have this eternal life, which is greater than the creation of the world itself. The sacrament of baptism, being washed clean, dying to this world, and rising to new life with Christ. All of these sacraments are greater works than even the miracles that Jesus performed during his time because they lead us to eternal life. They are the road to salvation, the road to this dwelling place with God. And we are able to participate in them. So often I think uh, we kind of think and hope, oh, if I was only around when Jesus was around, it'd be so much better. That'd be the, the greatest time to live. But actually, if we think about it and pray about it, the greatest time to live is after Jesus' resurrection. It's living right now because we are able to participate in these sacraments. We're able to participate in the sacrament of, of the Eucharist. Yes, it's different these days because of the pandemic, but we still have that, that spiritual grace and when we are able to receive him, hopefully very soon, sacramentally, what happens? We share in him. We share in his divinity. We share in that eternal life with him. This doesn't mean that there's not going to be suffering, that there's not going to be pain. We experience that right now with this pandemic. The pain, the affliction, the suffering that people are going through. And we ourselves are going through. But in this as well, we always remember this too will pass. And we're not living for this world. We are what? We are pilgrims on a journey pilgrims to be with God eternally in this dwelling place that he has created for us and how marvelous this is. And this is why just like in a marriage covenant, when the bridegroom and bride go to process forward to their new dwelling place, we too should always be living a life of rejoicing because we are on this journey as well following this road, this path of salvation through the sacraments to our eternal dwelling place with God. We're able to participate in this communion of love, this fullness of God eternally, never passing away. So we continue to praise the Lord, to live in this love, and to glorify him in all that we do.